And I heard the Cabinet Secretary of Energy saying that uh, he was invited on a matter that does not relate to him. I wondered what these cabinets, if they have ever gone to school. Because when you look at these two acts, which they fought so hard to pass them, and these two acts of parliament will hound this nation forever. The Energy Act and the Petroleum Act. If you look at the Energy Act, and if you go to the Energy Act on the issue of UPRA, it talks about the combination, the composition, the composition of the membership of the board of UPRA. And I'll refer back to him just to correct Senator, Cabinet Secretary Keter. That when you look at UPRA as an example, he fought so hard to take away UPRA from the Ministry of Petroleum to put it into energy. UPRA, if you look at UPRA, the functions of the authority is number two is importation, refining, exportation, transportation, storage, and sale of petroleum and petroleum products with the exception of crude oil. Mr. Speaker, when you go further and you look at the composition of the board of um, UPRA, you will find that the cabinet secretary of energy is represented there. And UPRA, which is the, the body that on a regular basis, each 14th and, uh, of every month, publishes new prices of petroleum, is the one who supervises it. It's in the act. This, are, this is not me saying. So I want to invite this fugitive of accountability to go back and read the law. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the character of these two individuals, it makes me miss a time, and I want to remind them, that there are times when we had very powerful cabinet secretaries, like Orengo, who sat in this very House of Parliament and were accountable to the people. They were asked questions. I long for that time. I was hoping that when I become the senator or a leader in this country, it will be a time when a cabinet secretary will be sitting there so that they can be able to account for people. Being called as a cabinet secretary, you, you must subscribe to the code of the Convention of Accountability that when you're a cabinet secretary and you're invited to, the, to parliament, you're not only accounting to the members of parliament here, but you are accounting to the public. These cabinet secretaries, Mr. Speaker, have made it so difficult, not only for the public, but also to members of parliament to be able to access their offices. In fact, they are running those offices as if they are, they are small kingdoms. Mr. Speaker, I said very clearly, and I want to repeat this, that this cabinet secretary, these two characters are fugitive of accountability, an embodiment of executive arrogance, and this must come to an end. Mr. Speaker, I want to remind them that we have seen very powerful people come down. And when you are up there, you have to be very careful not to allow pride to, to bring you down. Now, to the other issue, Mr.